Right. Oh, he believes he thinks he can tell me what to do. Right. I mean, because you're not in his jurisdiction, so therefore... Well, he thinks he's... He thinks I am. Right. He thinks I'm on his jurisdiction. Jurisdiction means what? I really don't know. That means to be under the control of somebody else. Something else. Jurisdiction means control. Jurisdiction yeah. control is the same word. He believes I'm under his control. I don't know how he's going to prove that. I'd love to see the contract. I'd love to see the, the DNA test come true that he's my daddy. But other than that, I have no idea how I'm under his control. Right. But he sometimes presumes I am. I never so said that. I mean, I mean per a person really shouldn't say anything in court, should he? No, just hand him a, just hand him a blank bill form. That's what I would do, man. Say, hey, man, here's a bill form. I said, if anybody orders me to do anything, I'm going to demand compensation, $50 for standing, $50 for taking my hat off, $300 for taking the, taking the witness stand. All you guys are going to pay to be here. The bail is going to pay. He's, you better believe if they called in a temporary judge that day because they were overloaded, you better believe he's going to hand a bill to the court clerk and say, hey, uh, for three days service this week, I'm going to give you a bill of uh, $500 a day to be here. Fuck yeah, man. It's all just fucking commerce, right? Right, that's all it is. Well, commerce means sex. It literally means sex. But well, I know. you know what I mean. It's business. It's, it's business, right. It's just yeah. business, people. It's just business. Nothing personal. It's just business. Mm -hmm. We're all here to make a little money. Do you know that's all right. Well, that's any all right. of them the letters that I sent you there that you looked at, I, I pretty much got that from a few of your uh, talk shows that you did there with Angie, uh -huh. Angela, uh -huh. or whatever. Yeah, you know, I you know, is there any uh, verified what? claim? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you said verified complaint. Yeah, you you got to start typing that up, man. There's no such thing as a verified complaint. That's ridiculous. It's a verified claim. Verified claim, yeah. Yeah, complaint is just you whining, bitching, moaning, groaning about something. That you right, know, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like your wife does to you. It's like, well, why do you got lipstick on your car? I know you're cheating on me. I just know you are. You're always a cheater. You, you're cheating on me again. Yeah. Okay, does you have any proof of that? No, she's just complaining about it. Does anybody have any third-hand impartial party witness of, to verify that I was cheating on you? No. That is all conjecture and speculation? Yes. Okay, then you don't have a case, ma'am. Right. Just like Marsha They've Paul never been in court me. even once, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, all, I'm greener than green, you know what I mean? Well, 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 you wrote some pretty good stuff, but you said that that's pretty good if you got all that stuff out of just listening to one of my Angela shows. <laughs> well, yeah. I, know, I recorded it and played it back about three, four, you know, until I got yeah. it all written down. So you went through this with like 60 episodes I've done now. You went through and go back and listen to 60, then you're going to be really tight. Well, I wish I had a, you know, time. I ain't got time now. You know but what I mean? Hey, you think I got time? I was, I was, I was, I was from 8, the phone started ringing at 6.30 yesterday morning from the guys from Indiana. You got then a shitload of cats, dude. Man, yeah, you'd think there was a lot then, man. That was, that was near the winter time. So they started uh, disappearing. You can see how many are now in the summertime. I must have close to 100. But what's funny, man, is I can't stand anybody else's cats, man. It's like, man, I, I can't stand like other people's cats. My cats? Oh, yeah, they're the best. But anybody else's cats? Man, I can't stand them. But these cats, I guess, because they're farm cats and they're real tough and badasses and stuff like that. Nobody's spoiled and everybody kicks ass. Yeah. You know, so they got a different attitude. You know, house cats, eh, can't stand them. Survivors be fucking eaten. Yeah, but farm cats, man, they're the best. They kick ass, man. They kill anything that walks across his property. They'll tackle it and they'll rip it apart. <laughs> they're crazy, man. So I think I'm going to go with one of them ones that I gave you then. And you, you sent back, or that I learned, you know. Uh, yeah, just go back and listen to a couple of these shows, man. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to leave these shows up, man, because me and Torshu seem to be getting along pretty good now. And uh, me and Torsi were going at it for a while. They pulled uh, Tom Murphy's show down. I wanted to try to call Tom during this show and ask Tom, what the hell happened to your show? He said that they pulled this show down. They didn't want to let him talk anymore. I said, what the hell? But they're leaving me alone, so you know what? And this is getting out to plenty of people. People are learning this stuff, you know what? I said, I'm just going to leave the damn channel on. I think it's a good idea. I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, but I'm going to get away from Thursday night because I'm stepping on Angela's toes. And she ain't called me up and said, hey, buddy, step on my toes. But I know I don't want to do seven, eight o'clock shows anymore. I'm doing 9 o'clock shows, but this is the time her show is on, and I don't want to be on the air at the same time she is on the air. Right. I want to listen to, I want to, listen to the guest on her show, too. Right. So, um, I was doing the Thursday night call because um, I was doing families only, only women and children on Thursdays, and I was always going to do it for an hour, and I said everybody was going to come over and answer the show. So I could help her a little bit. Yes, we could jump 
more on Huff on Huff show in case the guest sucked or the guest, she didn't have a guest. And I don't want her talking about the weather in California for two hours because sometimes she just gets stuck. She's not like me and I could just talk and bullshit for five hours all by myself. Right. You know, but she says, she gets Yeah, you go, man. Holy cow. You're like, oh, man, I'm oh. the bunny there. So, Carl, what are you going to do? Move to another I'm day or, or what? Yeah, well, I'm thinking I'm just going to do a Saturday show. What I think I'm going to do is a free show for you guys, I told you, and then a pay-per-view show, like, on a, a blog talk radio. So I could do Skype and everything else like that, and set up a camera, and have everybody follow my court case, uh, page by page by page. Because all the show is supposed to do is the whole thing of this, this show is supposed to take a blank piece of paper, put something on it, and just watch the process from one end of submitting it to the court club, to the jury, and having a judgment at the very end and executing the uh, judgment. That's all my show was supposed to be about. It wasn't supposed to be about traffic tickets. It wasn't supposed to be about pig farming. It wasn't supposed to be about child support. It wasn't supposed to be about anything. It was just supposed to be about how to move a claim through a court. How to establish a court. How to make sure that the court clerk doesn't interfere with your right to access the court. Which uh, yeah, 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 I want to know that. I want to watch that shit. Right, they haven't done that to me yet. They've been, they've been playing it by the book. I mean, all this, calm and this, calm and that, but if you can't stand your ground in the court there that you're, you're talking about, you you're setting it up, right. execute, right, you can't you can't court. hold the court, maintain yeah, no the court, you can't court. do it. Right, and you, right. Those people only catching certain aspects of this common law court nonsense. Right. And if you don't know how to move it from one end to the other, they'll be more than glad to pick up the ball for you, move you back into their side of the court, and run yeah. into the civil court. Exactly. Well, I mean, once you can, if you can do one, you can do a hundred million. Yeah, and that ain't right. nobody messing with you. Right, and that's the whole thing. They don't want you folks to learn what your grandfather and your great grandfather know. Right. Not to do it. They don't that's want. What I don't want. want. They, don't they don't want. They don't want. The, they, don't want the, they, don't want the, they don't want the community to know. They don't want the average man to know. They don't want anybody to know how, how everybody did it for a hundred years. They don't want you guys to know how to do it. And all I'm trying to do is show you guys how it's always been done before attorney stepped into the picture about a hundred years ago. Yeah. Well, Saturdays you're going to be doing that, right? Yeah. How's it going to stop this Thursday night stuff? And because I don't, I'm not talking to any women and children anymore. So there's no yeah. purpose. We be the I you catch me on Angela's show. You know what? I'll jump on Angela's show. And I'll just do Angela's show. And then if people want to talk to me after Angela's show, maybe I'll fire one up after Angela's show for a little while. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's what I used to do. I used to go on Angela's show. She said, call, I already got a guest. I said, okay, I'll just listen to it because she only does it for two hours and she's got to go take care of her kid. And then uh, the show was always over by 11. And then I said, folks, I said to Angela, I said, well, let me say goodnight. And if anybody wants to jump on my show, let's jump on my show. I'll start a show after you, Angela. She said, okay. And she just said, everybody go over to call because I really got to go take care of my kid. And call, I'll, uh, when I'm done taking care of my kid, I'll jump on your show and I'll listen to you. So, well, uh, God bless you. I'll talk to you a little bit. So I don't want to do this Thursday night show anymore because I'm jumping on her show. You know, I want to hear her stuff. And uh, because somebody said I did a really good show in July with Kurt Cullen back, and he said, uh, he said, boy, you really straightened that guy out. He saw the light. He started doing what you said, Cole. And then 10 seconds after you hung up the phone, he started going right back into his stuff. And uh, but you really had him for a couple of minutes. But I said, no, nah, it's ingrained in these people's brains, man. You're not going to convince them on one phone call. They're going to have to listen to my stuff over and over and over again, and then they're going to say, okay, now I could put some of Call's stuff in my stuff. Right. There's another good guy. Program. Named, yeah, there's another good guy called Ed Riviera, and he started emailing me and calling me like that and, uh, on, uh, on, uh, through the emails. And he actually was like on uh, like an Alex Jones kind of TV kind of show, and I can't believe it. The first three minutes, it sounded like me talking. It's like, oh, my God, this guy's got it. This guy's the one. He's going to be the one who's going to show everybody in this world what I'm doing. Yay! You know, somebody's going to carry on, you know, yay. And then four minutes into it, he starts talking like an effing lawyer. I can't believe it. He starts saying, well, the motion to court, petition to court, plead. I said, oh, Jesus, effing lawyer. You don't do any of that stuff. All that stuff you said, first three, four minutes, man, it was great. I was kind of wanted to follow you to the grave, dude, yay. Somebody's going to fucking leave the bandwagon, not me, yay. And then boom, all of a sudden he's starting to say, well, this is how you deal with the cop, and this is how you get them with their own codes. I was like, oh, Jesus, Lord, just stop. That, that, that's it. And, dude, just, you know, like, oh, my God. I don't know if he's like a lawyer kind of guy or a lawyer wannabe, but you know what? I, I, I don't even, I, I, I stay so far away from the lawyer stuff. It's scary. And a huge reason why I stay away 
if anybody tried to save me, Carl, are you practicing like a legalese, a law, like uh, across state lines? But, dude, that is your protected, copyrighted, registered, trademark. I would never interfere and infringe on your intellectual property of the legal society. All my stuff that I say to other people is my property. It comes out of my head, my mind, and you want to see my dictionary I wrote? I'll show you my words I use, and I'll show you that I'm not using yours. I'm not using your codes. I'm not using your Supreme Court rulings. I'm not using any of your opinions. I'm not using anything of yours. This is all mine. So good luck with trying to say, well, you know what? You're giving legal advice. No, I'm showing people what I believe the law reads, what, what I believe the common law is. Yeah, it's just interpretation, right? So right, what I believe the law means to me. What the law means is subjective but, anyway, isn't it? It's always an opinion. It's all opinion that it changes. It's fluid. It's not, it's not rigid. Even everything on a, even if they say everything on the universe is like an atom. Atoms are always moving. Right, so atoms energy in motion, still. always. Everything is always in motion. So even if it looks, you know, stagnant like a rock, it's breaking down. You know, it, it's 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 moving. The atom is, you know, trying to, you know, it, it's always moving. Yeah. So uh, like I said, man, it's a uh, that's what I'm thinking about. Like just jumping off the Thursday show and just doing five uh, Saturday shows because that way I could just do it for five hours straight. And I, I really to like to watch that one. You know, or, uh, be part of that one that you're gonna train or show, not train, but oh, yeah. you know, show well, the process. You know what I mean? Because I think that's the key, the key ingredient for for people to step up. Because it's, it's, that's all. That's all this world freaking needs is people to step up, and it all stops. That's it. Yes, because the, because these other guests. I mean, oh, thank you, Sonia Patterson, man. She donated me some money, and every time I try to say thank you to man, you you, you, you disappear. Your you screen goes blank before I can say thank you. So uh, thank you, ma'am. I think they're late from Canada. So uh, yeah, like guest eight and guest thirty one, uh, they're saying. Uh, Call when are you going to pull the plug and sue the court for dismissing your case? They, they didn't. They didn't dismiss my case, sir. Yeah, I, guess, I wish guess they would give a name. Oh, he jumped on his guest thirty one. Call when he because they could see just cut, copied and pasted it. Call when are you going to make the claim of the insurance policies of the court press office? They did not dismiss my case. If you did not hear the very beginning of my show, they dismissed. It was. It says call Rudolph Lentz, plaintiff versus Department of Human Resources defendant. Now. My case was titled by a man, okay? Now, they made a huge leap of faith in presuming that I, a man, is called Rudolph Lentz. Nowhere or not in my documents does it say called Rudolph Lentz. Now, for some reason, they created a case called, called Rudolph Lentz Plaintiff. Nowhere on any of my documents did I say I'm a plaintiff. And, and, and oh, yeah. Matter. They just put you in their court, right? As a matter of fact, I sent them a notice explaining that I'm a claimant making a claim, and I showed them on their website that it says, if you wish to pursue your claim through our court without representation, feel free to do so. So I said to them, on your website, it says, if I wish to pursue a claim, I have that right. So there you go. I'm a claim claimant, and I said, I am not a plaintiff, and I showed them etymologize the word plaintiff is a French word for wretched, miserable, or haggard. That is not me. I am not a wretched, miserable, haggard person. I am a claimant. And this is a claimant says a man pursuing uh, a property that was wrongfully taken from him. That's a claimant. That's what I am. So now maybe if they start a license to call Woodall one claimant, and eh, that's a little bit closer to the ballpark. But all I remember filing with the court was I am man. I don't, I don't know who this Call Rudolph Lentz is. Good luck with them trying to prove Call Rudolph Lentz. But what I'm going to do is since they place an order with Call Rudolph Lentz plaintiff, if nobody else will accept that order, I will accept that order. So, but honestly, the person that created that order was a lady named Debbie Yates. She's not the court clerk. She is a clerk of the court. She's a subordinate of the court clerk. So, obviously, I can't accept this order in good faith because, honestly, I know I am not Call Rudolph Lentz plaintiff. So what I have to do is I have to tender it back to the manager of the court, the, the, the chief judge. And I have to say, yeah. I, I believe that this was sent to me in error. I would gladly accept this order. But the person who created Paul Rudolph Lentz, like Harry Potter, is a lady. The person who created Paul Rudolph Lentz is a lady. I believe her name is Debbie Yates. If she does not want this order, I will be more than glad to accept all the equity in this order. And I will be more than glad to be burdened and carry out the order. 
does the VH refuse acceptance of this order? If she does, please tender the order back to me, and I'll be more than glad to be burned and carry out this order. And that's it. Call me period, sign, yours truly, blah, 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 I have no idea what guest 31 is saying. So, Carl, when are you going to make the claim on the insurance policies of the court personnel for dismissing your case? That's they, the haven't done any, they haven't done anything wrong to interfere with any of my rights. So how can I make a claim for them doing wrong? First, yeah, you have to send it back and hope she keeps it, right? Or... I hope, they, I hope they send it to me because I'm going to accept all of that equitable value in that order. Believe me. If they want to dismiss this claim, it's got value. And how much was the claim worth? Three hundred million dollars. I'm going to oh, fill out three million dollars. That's a double claim. I'm going to claim. It's not so much a double claim, but there you go. Double if you're claiming double not down, claim brown not, not not double down. Not, all <laughs> that I'm saying is, how much do they believe the lawsuit that somebody named Paul Rudolph Lenz, plaintiff, was suing for? How much was it? And they'll say, well, uh, he was called Rudolph Lenz is suing for three hundred. Good. And then you're telling Carl Rudolph Lenz he can't pursue this complaint. Right. Okay. So uh, so are you telling me that uh, you are to dismiss this? Right. Now, who is going to accept this order? I'll, I'll carry out this order for him. Who wants to accept this order? Does anybody want to accept this order? No. I'll take the order. I'll carry it. I'll bear the burden. How long do you want the case to be dismissed for? It's like, how long, like, when you dismiss from the army, you're not discharged, you're just dismissed. Do you want to dismiss me for what? Uh, dismiss this for a week, a year, two years? How long do you want to dismiss this thing for? Because it's not discharged, it's just dismissed. How long do you want to dismiss it? I'll bill you for how much money a day that it's dismissed. I'll bill you $100 a day for every day you want it dismissed. Because it's not discharged. <laughs> it, it, like I said, I'm just going to mess with them just to get them to look at the silliness of what they're doing but i'm just moving still straight with my claim i'm still right. gonna i'm still gonna require the work of the court to have a jury assembled and have the jury assembled within 21 days and to have um a court clerk or just a clerk of the court sit in attendance as a third party impartial witness to hear the verdict of the jury that's all i'm going to do then if they interfere with my right to see the jury in a public venue then you can start saying, when am I going to start going out there insurance policies? Then you can ask me that question. <clears throat> but you're jumping the gun. You're way too far ahead. First, they have to interview with my rights before I can make a claim. But that they're doing me wrong. They haven't done anything wrong to me yet. There's a lot of process, huh? What's that? There's a lot of process in all of this, though. Yeah, but it's not, it's not very long. I mean, I could have asked her to see the jury, uh, the, the side day. I just mean different, uh, you know, different procedures that you need to do. Okay, yeah. They are not going to help me with my procedure. They're going to help me with their procedure, but they're not going to help me with my procedure or the procedure that your grandfather had to use. Right. Your grandfather tried to work it out with the other side. The other side said, you know what, uh, like this side, the other side that I'm suing said to me, fine, we did you wrong. We totally agree that we did you wrong. They 12 be sick to me. They said, we totally agree that we did wrong to you. But... Here's the technicalities and here's the loopholes that we're going to try to use in, in, in court to keep us from having to compensate you for the wrong. Yes, we did wrong, but here's the loophole. We did wrong. That, that's called pleadings, right? No, that's called a loophole or technicality. That's all understood before you move forward, though, right? Both well, parties. What I did was I sued the other side. I gave them my claim that they did me wrong. In about 14 days, they answered. So they answered in plenty of the 21-day time limit. They answered in 14 days, 12B6. 12B6 means, yes, we did you wrong, Carl, but we believe the reason why we did wrong was a legitimate reason. Okay. It's like saying, okay, it, it, like what you would do is like say that you, you live next to a, uh, the, the lake, uh, the state lake, a reservoir, you know, that feeds New York City. And you see a little boy drowning. And you jump over the fence, you tear your pants, you pull this little boy out, you re resuscitate him, he freaks out because he sees some older guy pounding on his chest, 
uh, giving them mouth to mouth, the little kid gives them a nut. So you jump back over the fence, and a cop sees you walking down the street with ripped pants and uh, all something like He says, did you just jump in that reservoir and swim? You know there's a federal felony, 9-11 terrorism, are you a terrorist? You know, you're coming with me. So he's going to arrest you. He's going to say, no, 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 I just saved the little boy's life. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to, and the cop's going to say, where's the little boy? And you're going to be like, well, he got freaked out and he ran home. I don't know, he ran away. It's like, yeah, 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 tell it to the judge, tell it to the jury. And that's what you're going to do. 12 be 6. You're going to say, yes, I absolutely did wrong. Yes, I jumped in the reservoir. Yes, I know it's a federal felony. Yes, I totally agree that I should not have jumped in the reservoir because that's how I think it was. Yes, after 9 11, I realized everybody's all wigging out and everybody's all frightened and everybody's scared that the little water source is going to be poisoned. We all understand this. We all watch the Batman movie, we're all scared. We all understand your trepidations and fears and why we shouldn't be jumping in the, in the water like we do. But I had to save somebody's life. That's a 12 v 6. Now, is that a pleading? I have no ethical. That's a lawyer word. You think I care? I wrote the dictionary. Can I tell you what the pleading is? Yes. Am I gonna? No. Why? Because it's a legalese word. I don't give a rat's ass what pleading means. Well, no, I don't. That's the long way of me telling you I don't give an effing clue what pleading means. Because I don't plead. I don't sound like a sheep. I don't beg. Well, no, I was just reading a bit of a common law pleading book. No, no, there's no such thing as common law pleading. You ask a man walking down the street well, not, pleading. Not, it's not, I don't think it's considered pleading like you're thinking pleading. I think it's more of well, a, you know, ask, a structure. You ask, you ask the common man here on this, these two mountains that I live on, what's pleading? He's going to say that's the sound the sheep make. So you don't, when, you, when, you, when you're shearing, they will. They oh. <laughs> that's pleading. Yeah. That's pleading. Now, that's the common terminology to all the folks around here. Now, you city yeah. folks who live and watch, you know, uh, NCIC, uh, Double Jeopardy Las Vegas episode, then knows what pleadings mean because you watch more every day on TV. Right. We know what we yeah. think pleading means the, the shot the sheep makes. There's all I'm not a freaking sheep. sheep. Right, I'm not a freaking sheep. I'm not going to plead. I'm going <laughs> to No, I'm not going to do that. If everybody around here is going to think I'm crazy. So no, I just told you what I'm going to do, this, and that's what a 12 v 6 is. Yes, I did wrong, but there's mitigating circumstances, but there's a good damn reason why the fuck I did what I did. Okay, mitigating circumstances. Pleading, okay? There you go. I'm not going to talk up here. I'm just going to talk to my jury and say, look, I did wrong, but I got a damn good reason why I did it. Now, am I going to say, well, I'm going to make a pleading to the jury? No, they don't give it, they don't, they don't know what the hell that means. You're going to talk in a nice, common, kind of simple, one syllable, two simple words. No, no three syllable words. You're not gonna get, you're not gonna get uh, uppity and smart with these jury people. You're gonna talk like Jed Come Anthony. You're right. gonna talk Joe, 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 plain, basic, simple English because these people have the IQs of a macaroni. You don't want to confuse them. You don't want to lawyer up on them. That's why lawyers are scared shitless with juries because your attorneys would be, the jury, juries would be like, oh, he's using some big uppity schoolboy words. He went to college. Oh, he's showing us he's so smart. We're so stupid. You know, they, they don't, people want to be talked down to. So you're going to talk to the jury just like any common man. He said, yes, I did wrong, but I got a damn good reason. And let me tell you why. There was a little boy in that in that reservoir. I jumped over and I saved his life. And, it, and they'll say, and the sheriff will be, well, I don't see no little boy. It's like, look, does he have a third party impartial witness? Does he have anybody to deny my word? Because my word is, has just as much weight as his word has, which 50-50. We have people standing in court like that. My word and any other man is equal. He's going to have to tip the scale. And he's going to have to prove that I didn't do what I did. That what I did is not what I said I did. And I give everybody that example on the Judge Judy show. It was the best example. I have. You could find this. Google it for me. Put me the link for the Judge Judy show. Because I swear it was like 357, 358. I think I heard it. About the... Uh, the, the, the the nuns or something, then... Let me t let me tell the people who might be listening first time. Yeah, go ahead, the good one, for sure. sure. There was a bus load of freaking nuns and orphans, <laughs> and this black guy was on the other side of the show. He was like, do 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 I said, wait a second, it's 357. The show ends at 4 o'clock. I've never seen the Judge Judy show be continued tomorrow. This is crazy. How is this lady going to do a whole entire case in three minutes? And this is what I tell people. Yes, I could get in and out of court in two, three minutes. And they're like, oh, no, you can't. Watch the Judge Judy show. So that she had this, this, this nun standing on a plaintiff's side, and this one smug black guy, punk guy, 35, 40 years old, who's been in jail his whole freaking life, smug on the other side. And the show starts, and the lady say, uh, uh, what's the case about, ma'am? And it's like, oh, well, we're a bunch of nuns, and these are all the officers on the bus, and we brought them here as witnesses. 
And uh, this black guy came across, and we were up in uh, Spanish Harlem or wherever they were on 110th Street, Lexington Avenue. Bam, he comes through the red light, phone blows up, up off the bus, says, Hey, man, please forgive me, you old nuns. Uh, my brother owns a junkyard up in the Bronx. Come up to the Bronx on a, on a weekend, and uh, I'll be there, and I'll change the bumper for you. But please don't call in my insurance, and please don't call in my uh, driver's license, blah, blah, blah. So the nun said, okay, we're good Catholics, we will forgive thy brother, but you're going to fix our bumper, we're cool with that. So they said to the judge, Judy, well, we went to this junkyard, they had no idea who this guy was, had no idea who his brother was, this guy just totally bullshitted us, so, you know what, we want the $500, we wouldn't actually pursue somebody into the court, but, you know, we're an orphanage, uh, we don't have the 500 bucks, and we really need it to feed these kids. So Judge Judy said to the black guy, hey, what do you say now? Because those fucking pictures is fucking crazy. I've never seen those fucking white crackers in my life. You're out of your effing mind if you think I'm going to give you a fucking die. Just use that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the nuns are like, wait a second, wait a second. We got a hospital of orphans here that will testify. Judge Judy said, you want to explain a lot to you, real simple man? He said, let me explain this to you. White women like you used to lynch black men like him in Mississippi. And what would happen is one white woman would say, that black man looked at me funny, that black man touched me. Next thing you know, you got a hundred white guys lynching this poor black guy. So you know what? We don't take anybody's word on anything anymore. Ma'am, do you have a third party impartial witness that happened to see this event and when the bus bumper got knocked off? She said, oh, there's plenty of people. If you bring one of them into the courtroom, the point across that room and say, that black guy knocked this white lady's church bus bumper off. No, we didn't do that. Well, next time something like this happens, it's a good idea to get a third party impartial witness statement uh, and, uh, and at least their phone number or, their, or at least their address so you get that someone will appear in court on your behalf. Until then, your word has just as much as his word, and she said, Jeff Judy said to the white woman, and believe me, I read this Derek Bags fucking profile. He's got a history that rolls a mile long. This guy's been in prison his whole effing life. And you know why he's so good at coming into court? It's because he learned all this in jail. He learned this all those years in prison. He knows what to say and not to say when he walks into this court. And this black guy's just smiling, laughing his ass off. He says, damn, this lady's right. She's got my number, and I ain't saying a damn word to incriminate myself. I ain't saying it. I've been saying I have no idea who these women are. They got the wrong guy. Third, you might, third party, you might third think third my point witness. You just find anybody who just happened to see You get into an accident, you say, uh, Sir, sir, thank you for stopping and helping me. What's your name? Oh, my name's Bob Smith. Uh, sir, if I need you to testify and call for me on my behalf, you know, the, the, did, you, did you see what happened? It's like, oh yeah, that crazy clown just fucking blew through that stop sign and knocked off this nice little orphan lady's bus bumper. Oh, God bless you, sir. You saw that too? Yes. Would any of you men have a problem coming to court if I have to call you son's in the court to testify on that? Oh, not a problem, ma'am. Here's my name, here's my number, give me a call if you need me. Okay, thank you. That's how you get the third party partial witness. And yeah. I tell people to do that all the time. I told the man who owned a $300 to rent a center to go down to rent a center and make them an offer. He said, I couldn't pay $50 a month anymore. The best you could do is 30 I said, good. When you go down to rent a center, uh, just stand outside the store a little bit because it's downtown uh, Lexington here, and he grew up here. He's like 60 years old. I said, I'm sure you're going to notice somebody who's walking down the street who that you recognize. Just say to them, hey, can you please step into the store with me for a second? Why? Because I just need a third party impartial witness. So then he's going to say, oh, hi, Susie Johnson. Oh, I ain't seen you since grade school. Hey, how you doing, uh, Mr. Uh, what was his name? Hustada. Hey, Mr. Hustada, how you doing? Oh, not a problem. Come on, can you come on in here and say, I need somebody to witness something. Oh, yeah, sure. And then what he did is he made a proposal to the rent center for $30 for the payment on the sofa for 10 months instead of $50 for six months. And the guy told him, no, if you don't give me exactly what the contract says, we're going to bring the church department down there with a warrant of debt. We're going to haul out sofa with you sitting on it back to the store. So uh, you better just give us the money or we're going to bring drag your ass to court. We're going to ex- have a warrant of debt and then we're going to have it executed by the sheriff's department like we do to everybody else that doesn't do that beat, don't pay the bills. So he said, okay, well, I did that. I said, good, now you're going to be summoned into court. I said, but still send them the 30 bucks for this month's payment. And if they accept it, fine. If they don't accept it, they'll send it back. Who cares? At least you keep your word and you send them $30 like you said you would. So they did, and they sent it back, and they didn't want it. They issued the warrant, and uh, they issued the uh, summons on the fee. When he got the court, he brought the third party impartial witness. And the third party impartial witness said exactly what happened. You know, and then, and then uh, well, first Renaissance came with their paperwork and their contract. Said, look, he signed here, he signed here, he signed here, he signed here. Because I knew it was a little redheaded attorney, a little, little butterball lady, old lady. She's a mean old lady. She'll take, she'll take rental teeth away from a 90-year-old lady. She's mean. I've seen her in court. She slams everybody with this front single lady. She, she's merciless. You know, if you rented out teeth, she'll take your teeth. 
came up and she she won't cut me no slack. So uh, so I was like, oh boy, I always want to nail that. Out. So uh, she uh, did that to him. Uh, she gave all the contracts, all the signatures, all this. Say fifty dollars every month. Da da da. He knows the rules. Da da da. He doesn't. Da da da. Everybody knows the rules. Da da da. Rent a sentence. Three thousand dollars. Four hundred dollars. Da da da. Everybody knows the rules. He's no special. Da da da. So the judge. So he said to the judge, well. I went down there and I'm having some hard times. I said, yes, I'd love to pay $50, so I'd love to pay it off today, but I just ain't got the money. So, I went down there and I uh, just happened to see Susie Johnson walking down the sidewalk. So I asked her if she stepped in the store and we were talking. And we were laughing and joking and then Susie, Susie, what did I ask her this lady? And I was like, well, it was a man that he brought in with James Best. He said, James Best, what did he say? Well, he asked the clerk in the store and the clerk in the store said, uh, oh, James Best, uh, he was a good guy. I'm friends with his son, Jimmy. But anyway. James Best was his witness that time. So James Best said, well, the he offered him $30, and the lady told him, uh, you pay me the $50, I want to pull your ass out of that. <laughs> so why do you have with you, with you, without you on it, with the sheriff's department? And Jimmy, uh, Mr. Hopkins said the same thing, because that's exactly what he told him. So then the judge said, case dismissed. I hope you enjoy the sofa. Hey, tell me, did, did, that, uh, did that change the contract because they accepted that? Because, no. Well, who accepted what? Well... Well, say they did accept it, you know what I mean? No, they didn't, they, did, they didn't accept it, that's what... No, that's but if what. they did, if they did they, accept they, they it, accepted. would that have changed the contract? Was it, was it? Okay, okay. Because they failed to accept a payment on a debt, the debt no longer yeah. exists. Right. They should have said, yes, we'll be glad to take the $30. Can you right. please... Then, then next month, can you please send us 70 Right, and then come back with the original again, whatever. Right, and then they'll say, no, next week month I'll all be able to do 30. It's like, oh, okay, is there any time you think you'll ever be able to pay the full amount? Right, right, right. And he's supposed to say, as soon as I, lady, I'm playing the lottery as hard and as fast as I can. As soon as I win the lotto, I will pay every freaking time I owe. Trust me. Yeah. But see, and that's what I said to him. I said, my sister, my sister was in her Mustang before I got wrecked. We pulled up the street. He stopped me, him and James, uh, was laughing, and they handed me a watermelon for payment. See, that's how I used to get paid watermelons for helping people in court. <laughs> Chickens or whatever, they had eggs. So this man tried to give me a watermelon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, it's kind of silly. Bought it, but he has bought it. So he gave me, he just tried to give me this big old watermelon. I don't eat watermelon. My sister did, so I took it from my sister. So I said to my sister, watch this. This is how I said this, and we really pissed at me right now. Watch this. He looked pissed at me for what? I said, because you're a very dishonorable man. He said, what? I said, uh, so you just laughed when you walked out of the courtroom, right? He said, well, yeah, we got a free cell phone. I said, nothing like this free, sir. You, you just lost your honor. He said, what? I said, when that judge said, and hope you enjoy your sofa, say to this judge, oh, I'll more than glad I'll enjoy the sofa, but uh, this lady knows I'm still going to make good on the $300 I owe, and I'm still going to pay her the three thirty dollars for the next 10 months, like I said I would. You, you don't mind now, man, taking 30 do you? And I'm sure she'd say, well, uh, I guess it's better than nothing. Sure, I, I guess we'll take the 30 I said, but no, you think it's that funny that you just walked off with a $300,000 house, a $300 sofa, you think it's that funny that you just screwed the bank, you guys think this is hysterical that you effing screwed the fucking credit card company, you guys think this is all effing funny. I said, it's all going to catch up slowly in society, it's going to all start piling up, and our children are going to have no place to get credit, no place to rent anything, because you people are going to scare all these fucking companies, credit card companies and banks doing any business with anybody. You're going to have to be a millionaire before they extend you a lot of credit like it used to be in 1970 when my parents tried to get a house. Yeah. You're going to have to, going to, have to crew. I mean, this country so damn hard to fucking... Look at the people now trying to get a house loan, a, a mortgage. Someone said they're Fuck, there is no such thing as a loan anyway, though. So. It, it's... It, no, no, no. Did you, did you get a loan when you wanted a house in, in the year 2000, 2001? Yes. Is it possible for an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kid to get a mortgage on a house anymore? No. No, that's pretty you hard. Guys are it, you guys are screwing it for the next generation. But you guys are laughing about it, so what? You, got, you guys got yours. So what? See, so that's what I'm saying. I said to Mr. Best, uh, Mr. Hustetter, you're still going to pay that $30 a month. The rent He says, no, I got the free sofa. I'm taking it. See, and that's what I said to my sister. This is going to be the best. This is going to be the downfall of our society. Once you guys learn what I'm teaching you guys, and you guys start mastering this nonsense, you guys are going to be doing this all to the banks, all to the rental centers, all to the credit card companies, all to the GMC financing people. You're going to do it, and you're going to leave the country for a while. But they, they, these credit card companies, mortgage companies, want me to teach you this people this. So that way, they could just say to you people, well, you know what? That, that pesky 
constitution that you have that is of where forgive and forget is trespass and banks don't have standing in court and the common law reigns supreme so corporations can't come into a common law venue you know what we're, we're operating in a country where we can't win it's like going into communist cuba why do you think the Cubans, why do you think there's no banks in Cuba? You know, when, when they were in their heyday in 1957, 1958, when the casinos were kicking ass, I'm sure there were thousands of casinos down there. And there's thousands of banks down there where everybody could wash and launder their money. Now there's probably two banks in Cuba. You know, Banco de Cuba and Cuba de Banco. You know, and it's been both on by Patel and they probably got three cents in the bank. Because uh, it's a communist country. And then the banks had no standing in court to sue the people. So the banks are like, why are we going to do any business in Cuba? We're out of here. We're going to go to a capitalist country. So they stick in here in the United States. But if everybody learns that, hey, this is common law. We don't got to pay back. That's all fraud. I mean, you can't blame the people. They've been enslaved for hundreds of years. Who well, told you? Who? I'm not enslaved. I've never had a credit card. I've never had a mortgage. I'm not indebted to anybody. My sister said that to somebody else the other day. We went to the bank. Well, yeah, well, that's all fine and good, but it's pretty hard to uh, to not that? exist oh, right. without but that. Your, your mother and father were, your grandparents were, they never spent uh, money on anything that they couldn't afford and they couldn't pay off the next day. They never did it. Well, your parents had a mortgage. Oh, that was then, did they pay it? And then when they didn't pay it, were they more than glad to just move to F out because they knew they, they, they screwed it up? Yeah, they didn't fight it. They just said, hey, you owe money, we didn't pay it, get the hell out. And I, I guarantee if they had any trial by jury, the jury would have said, hey, we all pay our bills, we get the hell out. Because yeah, but you know, it's, it's okay, a lot of watch, coming out watch, in the world. Watch, 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 it's a wonderful life with Jimmy Stewart, okay? And remember the old man loses the bank's funds, and then they're going to be audited by the feds, and then and Jimmy Stewart's like, oh my God, I just lost all of the town's money. Oh, my, my, my co-worker, the old man, lost all of the town's money. See, because a bank used to be, all of, instead of you going around, if you wanted to buy a house, instead of you hitting up your mama, your sister, your brother, your next-door neighbor for money to go build a house or buy a house, you would just go to the bank. And they would just say, look, we'll put all of our money in the bank, and we'll put a loan officer like a Jimmy Stewart in charge like, of our money, the town's money, the town's folks' money. And Jimmy Stewart will be responsible for our hard earnings and our savings, and he will loan it out. In a, in a proper manner, the people who that he trusts will pay back the loan. Well, it, it, makes, uh, it makes sense what you're saying, no doubt about it. That's how, the, that's how banks always work since we were little kids. Now, all of a sudden, when I seen the first normal Joe Schmo get issued a credit card in 1980, I said, that's the, the collapse of our society as we know it. Because I wouldn't even lend my brother two bucks and expect to ever see that two dollars come back. And I couldn't imagine somebody giving my neighborhood kids, my kids, I grew up, the friends I grew up with, a credit card and think they were ever going to pay any time. I would never let the clowns in my neighborhood a dime. And yeah, but you gotta understand why they did it. I mean, they did it so that they could devalue the dollar, so they could put more they, money in circulation. What they're going to do, what they're going well, to do, is they're going bankers, to, right? what they do, no, what they want to do, is they're going to create a one for a quarter. And how they're going to exactly. do that? Exactly. Well, they have to kill every the, economy to do it. No, they're not going to kill the economy. You people, are, you know, the people who are borrowing the money are the ones who are going to kill the economy. The banks aren't forcing you to use a credit card. The banks aren't forcing you to get a mortgage. You're doing it on your own free will. You're doing it. You're going to try to blame the bank. You're doing it. So what's going but to happen? The liberty that every man should have a title to, though. What's going to happen, what's going to happen is they want a civil code world like France, Germany. They want us to operate in the civil code. We don't yeah. operate in, we're not a civil code nation, we're a common law nation. So in the common law, in the common law, the bank can't appear in court. So how are they going to get rid of the common law nations? There's never Other, been a democratic freaking society that's lasted, never. How are they going to get rid of the common law societies? How are they going to get rid of the common law nations? There's only a couple left. Almost every entire country on this world is a civil code nation. They're going to get rid of. They're going to get rid of our common law by the people begging the President of the United States to throw away the Constitution and to get rid of this common law. So the banks come back. So the banks start lending money again. And so the banks say, "Well, if you want us to come back into your common law country." Your common law nation, you're going to have to let us have standing in court. You're going to have to get rid of the common law. 
because in common law, the banks have no standing. So for us to have standing, we have to be in a civil code world where the bank is the creditor and the man is the debtor. You are going to have to allow the man to be the slave to the bank. Right now in a common law nation, we are the creditors and they are servants. They're going to say, we're not going to play this anymore. You are going to understand that we're the banks and we're the creditors and you're going to be the slaves. You're going to accept the fact that if you don't pay your debt, we're going to pay Oh, no, we're good. You know what I mean? It, it worked pretty good back in the day. But then they right. took the gold standard away and they started a it paying currency. It has nothing to do with gold standard. It has nothing to do with silver. They want to create a one world code. So the code here in Virginia is the same as the code in Virginia. It's going to be the same as the code in China. It's going to be the same as the code in Russia. It's going to be the same as the code in, in like, every, every nation is going to have one code. If you do something wrong with Virginia, there's no place in the world you can hide. I think it's going to be a common law code. <laughs> it's, going to be a civil, it's going to have to be civil code. Because everybody's customs are different. Indians have the Sioux Nation against Pariyoti. If you go over to the Cherokee Nation and you bring Pariyoti in there and try to give it out to the Indians, they're going to uh, arrest you. You can't, it's common to them, they've got to get rid of the common law. The common law, there's too many, like if O.J. Simpson had a common law trial by jury. He had black people. Now, if he went to Brentwood, California, or Hollywood, California, he'd be in front of a white jury. He would have lost. But he out in the venue shop, and he went before the people, his people, his jury, his peers. Yeah. So that's all I'm going to say to you folks. All he's going to do, or all, all, this kind of, all these banks want to do is operate under a code. That way the code is uniform across the planet. So they could have the same bank in the room and I know. Right. They want the same banking and it's universal worldwide. Kind of like UCC, right? Just like what? UCC. Uniform. That's right. They, do, they, want a universal, they want a universal code around the world. Exactly. So that no matter where they could do banking, they are going to have the same court, the same everything all over the place. So no matter if you borrow money in Peru, or you borrow money in Brazil, or you borrow money in South Africa, or you borrow money in Russia, it's going to have the same standard, same interest rate, same everything all over the place. Hey, I got a question for you. Well, my, my wife was in my car when I got pulled over. Does, does her weight, does her testimony have any weight against the, the officer? No, absolutely zero. None. Absolutely none. That's why I just explained to you about that busload of nuns and a busload yeah, of women in Brooklyn. Right, you need a third party impartial witness. Impartial, yeah. Right, and she's not impartial by a long shot. She's got something to gain. Right. But like I said, this is the, all this nonsense is like I tried to say a million times. All the banks are trying to do is get a uniform commercial code across the entire planet. So the only way they can do it is all you sunshine patriot warriors who scream constitution, constitution. When the banks pull out of this country like they pulled out in Cuba, and we're pulling our cars, our 57 Chevys around with donkeys, you people are going to say, hey, we don't want to live like effing Cuba. What happened to Cuba? And the guy on CNN is going to say, well, that's because Castro came over and the banks didn't have standing in court. It's like, well, why did the banks all leave here? Well, that's because you guys got this pesky constitution and common law, and, and Carl taught you guys that the banks have no standing in court. So you guys just told all your neighbors and all your friends, and you all stopped paying the banks, because you said, hey, sue me, because guess what? I'm going to offer you two dollars for my mortgage for the next two million years, and you got to take it. If you don't like it, F you, I'll see you in common law court. And they know they don't got standing, so everybody's going to get a free house. It's like, woohoo, Carl taught us all, woohoo, we're all, he's our hero. Yeah, I'm going to be your hero for about 20 minutes. And when you, when you guys find out that all the food stamps is through J.P. Morgan Chase, and then all your food stamp calls ain't going to work on a personal month. And your debit cards ain't going to work when you got to go to the gas station because the banks all pulled out. They're like, you know what? F this country, like they said, Cuba, F Cuba, we're out of here. And they're going to take off their business to 90% of the population on the planet which lives in China and, and Asia and uh, India. And they're going to say, you know what? We don't need you. You don't have any single freaking manufacturing plant we don't even have a garment industry in this country anymore. We can't even think that we can't even make a, a, a one pair of underwear in this country anymore. You, we can't you, even make underwear. You know that uh, you know all the banks and uh, governments and corporations have been foreclosed on, right? 
Have you ever heard okay. of anything like that? Okay. Okay, so like I said, what's going to happen is when the banks pull out, we can't even make an offer to pay underwear. When you guys try to use your food stamp card the first month, it ain't going to work. How fast are you going to pay the banks to come back and, and open up in this country? How fast are you guys going to say, get the banks back here, get the banks back here? And the banks are going to say, we'll be more than glad to come back to the United States of America. But, well, they can coin their own money. You have to, oh, yeah, really. Calgary can coin. How industrious do you think you are? How, how much coin, how much money have you minted so far in your lifetime? How long have you been Eight on this planet? Uh, but I, my signature is worth a whole bunch because they monetize oh, sure. 14 times. So how many signatures have you passed out and how many people want to accept your Elvis Presley autograph for money in exchange wow. for something If wow. you give me your signature, you come to my house right now and you sign up your name on a piece of paper, what makes you think I'm going to pull the watermelon out of my garden and give it to you? Well, maybe you won't. But of course, somebody that can will. monetize it will. will monetize and that's it. what they've been doing to everybody, and that's why that's why everybody's pissed off at them because they basically just forced and enslaved everybody into slavery. How long did it take the banks to pull out of Cuba? Twenty minutes. I don't even know, dude. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. How long do you think it would take the banks to pull out of the United States? Twenty-one minutes. Okay, they're gone. Okay, they're gone. This, boom, Cuba, they woke up the next day, all the banks are gone. The casinos, all the banks are gone. Boom, everything was gone. Gas pumps didn't work no more. The electrical company didn't work no more. Nothing worked anymore. They were back to the donkey age. Yeah, but so I don't think point. it works like that, Carl. Who, who doesn't work it, like it that? It doesn't work like that because we're running on a fiat currency for the last, uh, since 1933. Look, okay, so these people who do the fiat currency, the banks, they print the money, they make the money, right? Right. They don't, they don't give a effing care if you bring a boatload of green money to their bank. Well, all, now it all just comes to comes to a different common ground. Okay, you what's going to be our new value? What are we going to trade? What's the acceptable... You don't understand. The United States is a third world country. We're no different than Cuba. We can't even manufacture one pair of underwear in this country. We can't manufacture one television set. Okay? We can't do it. We're a third world country. You know what? You know what everybody applauded last month? Yay! Finally! The United States of America is an oil exporter and a gas exporter. What is that telling you? We no longer have a production. Co we no longer have need for oil or gasoline. Why? Because we're not making anything anymore. Nobody's going to work anymore. So when we're a third world nation. Who exports oil? Third world nations. Where do they export it to? Industrial nations. Yeah. Why did we all of a sudden say, yay, we're now an export of oil. Yay, we're an export gas. Yeah, why? Because we don't need it anymore. Why? Because there's no more production in this country. Nobody's producing around. What? You no, know, after it goes from China for, I mean, China's on their downslope now, same with India. It's going to go somewhere else. And then well, it's going to go somewhere else. Says, we don't produce anything anymore. And nobody right. seems to understand this. We're not a productive country anymore. We can't make Democrat. a television set. We, we can't make a television set. What the hell does it matter if we're communist, a Republican, uh, anarchy, uh, if we're a, a self-governing nation, if we can't make a, produce our own underwear, make a television set. Right. Who cares what the, the title of the government is? Who cares? I don't care. I couldn't care less. Can, are we a productive country anymore? No. And, and if the banks are all right. we, can we turn it to Cuba overnight? Yes. And then what are we going to do? And then what? Then all they're going to say is like, look, the same thing that happened to Cuba. When Fidel Castro, Castro dies, the banks come back. Why? Because then his brother's going to say, come on back and do business again with us. We'll be more than glad to allow you to establish credit and debt is and put our people into slavery and uh, issue people loans. Just well, come that's on back. that's the whole thing right there, Carl. People don't want that. They're okay, so you want to wake it up. I, you, you I don't want to be a fucking slave. Good, good. So why don't you try moving to Cuba and see what it's like to be a free man? Because they're all free. Because they're not a slave. Because they have no debt. They have no mortgage. They have no loans. They have no credit card debt. Right, and they don't have probably a lot of the things that we have here. But right. you want to go to Cuba? You want to live like that? I could live like that, knowing that well, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not a, a run by a tyrant. I, I, I guarantee Cuba will welcome you with open arms. Instead of complaining about what we got here, why don't you go move to I'm Cuba? I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that you it needs to change. You're saying that you're saying that the banks are horrible. Go move to a country where they have no banks and they have no credit and nobody could just go buy a new car by a signature. Well, look, at, look at Iceland, you know what I mean? Look at what they did. Okay, they because they're, the are, they're, they're, a, they're a homogenous society. They're all one people, they're all one family. They all know each other. It's a little tiny community. You think that nonsense is going to work here in the United States of America where we can't even agree uh, on any freaking thing? 
Everybody's got 10,000 different opinions here in this country. Everybody thinks, oh, well, well little Jock's got a right to have his opinion heard. Okay. He's got a long way to go, but yeah, you're right. But when, when, the go, when the banks pull out, out the there could be a unity. Oh, yeah. Okay, you tell me last time that you had a, 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 a snow hole, you live in Maine, that's different. But tell me yeah. if you had a snowstorm, tell me you had a snowstorm in New York City, a snowstorm in Chicago, or maybe even a snowstorm in Maine. How fast does all the bread leave the shelves? Oh, pretty quick. Oh, pretty quick. And that's nice, plain Jane white people who live up in Maine. And they will still take every damn loaf of bread before their dying neighbor can get it, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, so you're telling me there's going to be some sort of unity here? You're telling me there's going to be some sort of unity here? Like Iceland? Oh, please. you got to be kidding me. At least Iceland all realizes they're a little tiny island in the middle of the North Atlantic. And they know they have whole. to help each other out. See, right. that's the difference. We, we think, right, we think it's every man for himself. We're going to buy every yeah. freaking loaf of bread in that that's store, right. and we're going to kill uh, little Johnny's mama next to us to get that last loaf of bread. Oh, yeah, the psychology's got to go a long way here first. Right, yeah. that's what I'm saying, sir. I mean, it's nice that you have a great opinion about this stuff, but you really got to look at the reality of what you're dealing with. And uh, yeah, it's the reality. Yeah. So what's what's going to happen is the banks will say we'll be more than glad to come back to Cuba. I guarantee, as soon as Castro dies, so many people are going to want to run back to Cuba, and they're going to say, "Look, is this an open society again? An open market? Can the banks come in? Can they capitalize on people?" Because that's what capitalism means. Capitalism means taking yeah. advantage of somebody else. Okay, that's exactly what capitalized means. We live in a capitalist society, which means I have the right take advantage over somebody else's stupidity, weakness, and laziness, and sloppiness. If you want to be dumb, and you want to watch Dancing with the Stars, and you want to lay down all night, and you don't want to work as hard as I am, obviously I have the right to buy more than you do, and I don't have to share it with you. That's capitalism. I got the right to take advantage over somebody else who's sloppy, lazy, slow, and just doesn't care. Now, if I want to work 24 hours, 7, 365 to acquire uh, the greatest uh, co hanger factory in the world, I should be blessed with the riches of my hard labor. That's the capitalist society. And this other guy could say, well, look, I want to I want to be a soccer dad, and I want to go home and see my kids, and I have a coat factory, coat hanger factory, too. But I can't make as much as Carl does because he works too much. That's not fair. Somebody should slow him down. That's ridiculous. Go walk to Cuba. You, wanna, you, want, you want fair? You want equal? Go to Cuba. You know what? Because nobody gets off their effing ass. It's like Venezuela. And everybody knows that what, we're all going to get a check for $600 a month, uh, whether we work or not. So why should we go to work? We don't, because we're Venezuela, we're Cuba, that's why Russia collapsed. So that's what I'm trying to say. So all that's going to happen is the banks are going to pull out of this country and it's just going to collapse until everybody begs them to have equal standing in court and have a civil code of the country. As soon as we have a civil code, the banks will come back. And then when the banks come uh, back, when it's a civil code. We're one of the only nations on the planet that still have a common law. You know, a civil code is probably not so bad, but... I mean, it's just not my family, fair. My, 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 right, my family who lives over still over there. Make something a little more reasonable. It might be a little more uh, applicable. Like my, right, know? exactly. Like my family who lives over in Germany and France. They can live in a they live in a common law country now for 60, 70 years. So now they all know all their cars have to be painted yellow. Why? Because you know what? It's the government's issue. Because they said it's safety issues, and for the common good, everybody should have a yellow car. If everybody, if you have a tent on your car, well, you're going to get fined and penalized because everybody has to have a nice car because the, the old, if you have a tent on your car, it brings down the value of the community and nobody has to look at tented cars. And, and all your cars have to be less than three years old because it'll bring down the community standards so everybody, for the benefit of everybody else, has to have a bonnet car. So what happens there is there are very few people who actually own cars because yeah. they, can't meet, they can't meet the government standards. That's what's going to happen here. And I was talking to Malik about that the other day, about this is like a city like Chicago. They are making it so hard for him to get a driver's license. They're making him jump through so many loopholes that he's finally going to give up and start taking mass transit. Because they don't want cars in the, 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 the city limits of Chicago. I said, yeah, it's the same thing. Like I said, let me finish that up with the banks. Let me finish it up with the banks. What the banks are going to say is, if we all move to a civil code land, like they did with Italy. Remember Italy, the Moscone guy? I remember his name. But they kicked yeah. out of that president, and who runs Italy now? I don't know the who president, it is. The president of a bank. You know, the, 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 what's, the, what's the currency they have over there? The European Union, whatever they got going over there? The Euro? The, 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 Euro. the Euro, right. The, the, the people who uh, control and uh, monitor the Euro put like a bank president in charge of the president of Italy. So the president, 
uh, Italy is now actually a bank employee. So he is the one who is now running Italy. So that's what they're going to want over here. They're going to say, we want a civil code land, and we want somebody in charge of this country who is a banker, who will help, you know, control this country for us, for the banks. So then the banks will come back. But they'll say, well, this pesky constitution and common law is in our way. So I'm telling you, when you guys lose your food stamps, when you guys try to use your debit card at the gas station, when you try to use credit cards and you can't get loans, and, and, and none of that stuff works, and it turns into Cuba overnight, they're going to CNN is going to say, look, all we have to do is throw the Constitution under the bus and get rid of this common law, and the bank says they'll be more than glad to come back and do business with us again. But until they have standing in court, um, they're not coming back. So you guys well, are going to throw the Constitution under the bus. And President, it's funny, Obama's going to say, no, people, I can't throw the Constitution under the bus. No, I can't get rid of the common law. That would be unconstitutional. And I'm the president, and I've got to secure and protect the Constitution under all enemies, foreign and domestic. So, no, you're going to have to, you people are going to have to vote. And you're going to have to have an amendment, the, the 97th Amendment, whatever, the, where we want to have three quarters of the states have to ratify that we're going to throw away the Constitution, and we're going to get rid of common law, and we're going to let the civil code reign across this land. You people are going to have to do it. I'm just the president. I have to protect the Constitution. You It'll never happen. What? It'll never happen. You don't think the people will want their food stamp card to work overnight when 50, 50, 50, 60 percent of the country eats off of food stamps every month? I don't, I don't, think, I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll give it up for a bank. That's for sure. You don't think the people oh, want? You, you don't, don't need a bank. And people are the value, not the bank. Okay, it's, so it's, when it's they, our when energy they, that okay. even allows them to freaking exist, you know what I mean? When the food stamp cost doesn't work on the first of the month, how long do you think a loaf of bread will stay on the shelf by the second of the month? Well, it's, it's not just there, it's everywhere in the nation. Everyone's going to be in the same boat. So right, why do you so think how people long, are going to so come long together? You, right, so when, when, when the people who line up, you see it on CNN all the time, people line up on the 30th, 31st day, of the month, and they wait outside Walmart for their food stamp card to activate. They wait in online just to enter the store on the first of the month. It would stroke at midnight. They could go run in there and get a loaf of bread because they ate up all their food during the previous 28 days. So right. as soon as that food stamp card doesn't work, and you got 10,000 people outside of Walmart waiting for the stroke of midnight so they could run into the store and strip the shelves, when they when they get to the food line, when they get to the cash register, and the card doesn't work for any of them, how long do you think those people are going to stay civilized? Well, how fast do you think they're going to take their shopping carts full of food and just leave the store and say, F you? You know, exactly. that's thing. Well, that's what they should do. Okay, so then the second day of the month when you wake up and there's no food in the Walmart shelves, what are you going to do? I'm going to have my wife make me a loaf of bread. Okay, and then I'm when you have that one. Right, so then when, 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 when. Like I, I said, I don't, I'm not like what you're suggesting. I, myself, I, I've never, I don't need credit, you know what I mean? Right, I, so I, know, I, 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 I mean, I know, I, know, I, know, I know you and your wife are unique, that you and your wife are going to fire up that good fire stove, you're going to put some logs on, she's going to bake bread in a cast iron stove, because you guys got a cast iron oven up there, and you're no. one of three people on the planet that got that ability to do no, that. No, but if I need, a, I need fucking electricity, my electricity don't work, I'll, I'll uh, make a freaking generator, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, and, and, and everybody in this country is all set to do that. No, but you can do it. For the 60% of the people whose food stamps cost won't work, how long do you think they're going to tolerate this nonsense? Oh, I'm sure there's going to be chaos, for sure. And they're going to say, how do we get the banks to restore the funds in the in the food stamp costs? And, and it's never well, been from the banks, is all well, I'm getting at. It's always been from the people. Oh, where does the food stamp costs get come from? Who, who provides the finances? Who provides the billing and the routing and, and all the logistics on the food stamp costs? Who does that? U.S. Treasury. No. It all, it all comes JP from the U.S. Treasury, Treasury that is... Google it. Google it. Probably. The Federal yeah. Reserve. Good. And, 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 and who's the contracting company that supplies all the logistics and, and, and all, all, all the and all, all all labor? Walmart probably the past. Dude, if you don't know the answer, listen to the fucking guy who does. I do. It's J.P. Morgan Chase, okay? They provide all the logistics on how the food stamp costs of work, okay? And they get it through the farm bill, okay? That's how they get the, that the Congress passes a farm bill. And the farm bills got the funds provided for food stamps. Guess what was not passed last week? I don't know. The farm bill? Uh, the, the farm bill was not passed last week. So the funding for food stamps hasn't been provisioned for next year. What happened if they don't come to some form of terms and agreement with this farm bill on January 1st? 
Then J.P. Morgan says, well, you know what? Congress didn't provide any funding for the food stamp program January 1st. I guess we're just not going to put it out of our pocket. I guess you people are going to have to make the farm bill come to life and get your congressmen to start agreeing on something. Well, maybe they'll pass the bill in two, three months from now. Who knows? But everybody gives, who gives a damn about I the farm I think every bill? American should indict freaking Congress, the, the oh, yeah, representatives. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, freaking January, but, okay, everybody's playing a tender right now, sir. Nobody gives a damn. Okay, all I know is that food stamp card works and they're happy. January 1st yeah. comes around, the farm bill hasn't been passed. J.P. Morgan yeah. doesn't issue out any fucking current, any credit on anybody's card. Okay, then all of a sudden these people are going to go to Food World, um, Walmart, and they're going to say, hey man, my debit, my food card is well. Oh, that's because the Congress didn't pass the farm bill in June. Oh, that's, that's funny the because they contract that out. They didn't have, the United well, States can, can mail everybody a card in a week. Yay, but the farm bill didn't get passed, so there's no provisions for the, for the food stamp cards coming January 1st. Yay, does anybody give a rat's ass about the farm bill now, on July, whatever today is, July 10th, does anybody, uh, July 11th, does anybody give a rat's ass that the farm bill wasn't passed? No. The only people that don't give a damn that the farm bill was passed is the farmers. And they only make up, what, 2% of the population? So nobody gives a rat's ass. Well, they're all going to give a rat's ass on January 1st, when they find out, hey, yeah. there's no funding in the farm bill. Then all of a sudden, everybody's going to love the fucking farm bill. Everybody, everybody in all the inner city youth are going to be like, hey, pass the farm bill, pass the farm bill. Right now, they're playing Nintendo. They don't give a rat's ass the farm bill gets passed, because they think the farm bill only has to do with farmers. Yeah. That's where the food stamp funding comes from. Yeah. And you think J.P. Morgan is going to say, well, the banks will cover them. The banks will cover them. Don't worry about it. We'll cover it for you until Congress passes it. We'll cover We'll float it for you. We ain't going to float shit. They're going to shut that thing down so fast it's going to be funny. Right, but I mean, as soon as they shut it down, they, somebody's going to step in. Oh, okay. When, 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 Ronald Reagan Reagan shut the, when Ronald Reagan shut the federal government down back in 1984, who stepped in and paid all these federal workers and put all the federal uh, agencies back uh, uh, up and running? Nobody. They well, went down. they can't uh, because they, they, it was about the money supply. Okay, so... so Get when rid of the money supply, start coining okay. your own freaking money and... When Janet, when Janet, everybody's playing the tender right now. Nobody gives a rat's ass about your opinion or my opinion. They don't give a rat's ass. They're, they're, playing, they're playing Nintendo. There's 20, people, there's 20 people listening to this call who actually give a damn about minting your own money. And after this call, you guys are going to go play Nintendo anyway. You ain't going to figure out how we're going to mint money. I'm sure you don't have a minting press ready to go, sir, if, if they pull the plug January 1st. Neither do I. Minting press? No, but I know how to survive. Oh, good. And how about all these millions and millions of people in the well, city? Hey, right. you want to, I mean, do your due diligence and fucking become proper. Oh, okay. Right? Cool. Okay. Well, what, all I'm saying is, sir, no, is I you mean, it's really, it's, it, it, okay. really, it's the United States government or the uh, the black op fucking government that's running this world has, has put everybody in the position they're in. I mean, you know, oh, everybody's accountable. They're accountable. Everybody that fell into this little uh, soiree is accountable for their own actions. Yeah, they, they, they're they, the ones who were induced by you, you all of this shit. But you just said the completely opposite thing. First, you said it's the evil empire's fault. Then you're saying it's everybody's fault. Whose fault is it? It's your well, fault. Ultimate, ultimately, it all starts with you. That's right. It's, it's the people. The people no, make it. Not the people. No, it's not. But the it's people. been induced. It's, it's you. It's, it's been induced it's to us. There's no doubt deep. about that. This whole it's system's deep. been induced. What system? I'm not. What what system do you believe I'm a part of? I live on a freaking mountain. Well, yeah. Well, you're not in it. That's right. But you're like smarter than the average fight. bear. But well, I, I left ninety-eight percent of the population isn't. You know what I mean? I'm well, smarter than the average bear too. Not. But but it's not. It's not. I'm smarter. I can just see this isn't right. Well, it's yeah. You get a little foresight, right? No, I just know in my heart, in my gut, it doesn't feel right. So when something doesn't feel right, I don't do it. Right. I put that innate ability in a cat, in a dog, in a mouse, in a butterfly, in a worm. Right. See, when they, but when now, they know something's not right, they don't do it. But that's because you've never been programmed. Well, all of these 98% of the population's all been programmed, you know what I mean? Programmed. Well, well, through what school, mean? Uh, so through TV. Like, Oh, However, so you, whatever so you, communication you pick, man, it's all been pre-planned. So what you're telling me is they didn't have that innate ability that God put in every man, woman, and child to say, when this isn't right, this isn't right. So you're saying 
that they've been able to been programmed over their natural instincts. Yep. yep. Okay. Well, then what would you like me to do to try to get those people to uh, just rely on natural instincts like I do? When I know it's right, I do it. I you know. Think it's no, man. When you figure that out, you'll save the world. <laughs> what I'm saying is, there is, to me, how do you try to deprogram somebody? Huh. That's why you move to a mountain and you try to find other people that don't believe. That's it. Find people. your common ground and make a clan. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. So like little communities said, here and there, here and there. Okay. People of like mind, you know, and right. everybody so working saying, together. And then right. you don't, so you don't even need a fucking bank. You don't even need gasoline. You make your own fucking gasoline. You need electricity. You, you, you make electricity. The only good thing and bad thing about all that stuff that you're saying is. The people right now in the cities, they have all the beautiful modern conveniences. They got air conditioning, they got yeah. indoor well, they got beautiful, go. they got beautiful coils, they got people, huh? They got the best electronics in the world, okay? We're all, all over the world. Now. No, you don't, no, no, just, just let me say, let me say something here. They I got the it. best, they got the best of the best of the best, they got well, all the modern conveniences. Sir, let me just finish what I'm saying. They got the best of every effing thing on the planet. Okay, me and my sister, okay, we're 50 years old. We finally got an effing TV after three years of not having a TV. We bought a used TV for $220. Okay, now all these in the city kids, they got this wall to wall screen, LEDs, LCD, whatever, and plasma screen TVs on a credit card. They're, yeah. They've been watching TVs and movies and laughing their asses off for years watching this wall to wall screens. Okay, right. So, who is. Would you say is better off the people who got every effing thing in the city who say la 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 la, you. right? Or me who just struggles every day to survive? You. Okay. That yours is real. But but the and city theirs is people, a fiction. And they they, 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 they should, should, the city, they should the be city, accountable for their fiction. When the city people come out and look at me and my sister, they go, "What a bunch of cakes! What a bunch of sloths! What a bunch! I can't believe they live like this. Where's the TV? Where's the internet connection? Where's the Skype? No." Well, you know, how could you live like this, people? They say, what? You know, this is this is just, you know, the way... Uh, right, right. Our parents in 1970 would only dream to live as good as we are. They're like, what, are you kidding me? You don't have this, you don't have this, you don't have this. How can you people live like this? See, so they're laughing at somebody like me because times are good and things are kicking. But right. when things go down on them, they're high and they're low is such an extreme, it's not even funny. That's if right. Me and my sister, right. If me and my sister lose something, eh, right. just what did you lose, lose, really? Right. Okay, so we dropped our standard of living a little bit. So yeah. what? We're not going to get yeah. hit so hard. But these people right. who live in the city, all of a sudden, when their crash happens, it's going to hit, it's going to hit hard. Oh, yeah. It's so hit so hard hard what, sure. Right. So when they're deprogramming, will come pretty quick. When they have to start realizing, they're going to have to just care about the bare basic necessities of life like right well, you've, you've been living a natural order your whole life right so, but like i said they will get their innate abilities for survival instincts when it totally collapses then they'll yeah. say okay what is the motivating factor of day-to-day -day life water what's the next thing we need food yeah. so they're going to forget about their nintendo it's going to take a while for them to pull away from all their electronic gadgets when nothing is working Right, but they will oh, have people to trying to get out of the city, though, which is good. Right, but like I'm saying is, so well, that's why I always laugh when people said anything about a FEMA camp. I said, FEMA camp? What are you talking about a FEMA camp? The FEMA camps hold what? Maybe a million people? Okay, what about the other 359 million people in this country? Where are they going to go? The people who are in FEMA camps are going to be grateful they're in a FEMA camp because they're going to be food, housing, shelter, and, and health services. What about the other 360 million people in this country? Where are they going to go? They're going to beg to be allowed into a FEMA camp. But it's like, oh, no, they're going to put us in a FEMA camp. Okay. You realize where you're going to be without food, water, or the banks? You realize you guys are going to be begging to bash down at a FEMA camp gate to get in there? You see what I'm saying? You, you guys don't understand, man. It's totally opposite of everything that we're looking at. If you look at everything completely opposite, you're right. <laughs> you're going to be correct. And that's what I try to tell everybody. He says, get into the game. When you go into court, accept their orders. Take their orders. Flip it around. Hand them the bill. They ordered something, sell them. Why are you finding their orders? Flip it around. Look at it from the other side like I do. Look at the way I'm living. It's completely opposite of everybody else in society way of living. Why? I think I'm doing fine. My brother and me was so funny, man. We said this when we were 20 years old. I said, look, 
when we hit 50 years old, we're going to come back and experience what we did for 30 years. I'm going to live totally opposite of you. And so he, what he did is he's been working for State Farm for like 30 years. He's had the same job, same wife, same kid, same house, same everything, same neighborhood. It's ridiculous. It's so funny. And then I've been all over every place, all over the planet, doing all kinds of crazy things. And we'll say, we're going to see what happens when we get 50. Who has a better life? And he was totally into it. He's like, dude, that's cool. Let's do this. You know, so he was into that style anyway, the credit card style, uh, the, the, the gated community style, where he knows everybody's lawn, and then the other neighbor breaks everybody's leaves, and the other guy shovels everybody's driveway. It's funny. They got a whole little uh, uh, kumbaya nonsense thing going on. I mean, it, everybody's house is the same. It's ridiculous. But it's a swell little experiment in like communal living. And me, I'm a total capitalist. And it, it's interesting how societies work out.